one in just a second. I'm going to be introducing author Sarah Ackerman, and she is in Hawaii, and I'm in Pennsylvania, so we had to do a little bit of time adjustment. It is 7 o'clock in the morning for her, so I kind of feel bad. It's 1 o'clock here, but anyway, so she gets to wake up today and talk to me, but we're going to be talking about her brand new novel, Island of Sweet Pies and Soldiers. It's a historical fiction, World War II, it takes place in Hawaii. It's amazing. So everyone, here is Sarah. Hi, everyone. I am so excited today because I am speaking with author Sarah Ackerman all the way in Hawaii. And we're going to be talking about her new book, The Island of Sweet Pies and Soldiers. This book came out in February, and I am so excited to talk to you about this book. I loved it so much. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on so early in the morning. I really appreciate it. And, you know, as you're just waking up. And uh, I have to say, um, when I went on your website, and I saw that, I hear, you know, you said you have a little bit of a cold. Well, I saw you're an acupuncturist. And I, uh, us here on the East Coast, like, we are having, like, huge sinus problems because our winter weather just won't go away. So I am really into, like, natural, you know, like, trying to fix the problem, not just take Tylenol for my problem. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. I went to a massage place that claimed that they could cure me of my sinus problems. And they did for, like, three days. And now it's back. And when I saw that this morning, I was like, oh, I wish she lived around here. I bet she knows what to do about my sinus problems. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, acupuncture is great. Needles will, could kind of help the, help the symptoms and the pressure. But generally, they would, we would prescribe herbs. And a lot of the herbs are over the counter. You know, if you go to your health food store, mm. they will have some great options for sinus. Chinese herbs, citrus is always really good as well, and kind of citrus, eat as much citrus as you can, yeah. That's right, because I did see that you knew a lot about Chinese medicine, and, you know, I was a big Louise Hay fan, and she started her journey, I should say, on, her, on what she considered natural healing from Chinese medicine. So I, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Love her. <laughs> I know love her, and I actually have her app, and I, that's what I, you know, I, she's the one who kind of got me into thinking that way. And um, so I love talking to people who also have that same thought process, yeah. you know, because my children yeah. all think I'm crazy, and they're like, "Why do you? Why don't you just take some, you know, medicine and make it go away?" I'm like, "Because it's not going to make it go away. It's only going to be temporary, and I want to fix it." Right. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool, and I just had to, you know, tell you that I love that about you. So <laughs> anyway, I this oh this novel I love historical fiction. Okay, and then World War II is like you know one of my favorite, of course. And I've read so many books. Uh, not recently, um, they kind of come in waves. So I was really happy to get this one. I did because I haven't read as many recently, but I mm -hmm. never read one that it was on Hawaii, you know, that, that mm -hmm. talked about that part of World War II. So I was so happy to read this book. So oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah, I feel like it. What it's definitely a different twist. There are a lot. I, it seems like in recent years there's, there are tons of World War II novels, and they're all – I read a lot of them and very much enjoyed them. Um, but I also thought it would it would be nice to add a, a twist to it, um, and especially because in Hawaii, this is where we were on the front lines. You know, this was where it happened. We were attacked, and and then this is where we went forward into the Pacific to Iwo Jima, um, as you know, where the soldiers here that was stationed in Waimea at Camp Tarawa ended up going to Iwo Jima. So I think it was, uh, yeah. It, I didn't set out to write a World War II historical novel, but because it, I had grown up on these stories, I think they were just kind of waiting in the back of my mind to be written. Because, yeah, and because it affected your family. I mean, your family was there, which I was thinking, you know, it's amazing that we don't read more books about Hawaii and World War II because it's the only place that 
it was affected on American soil. Okay. Right. Every, but, you know, that's what I was thinking when I was reading this. I was like, I can't believe I haven't read more books, you know, that it, they're just mm-hmm. not there. But that, it, that's also what makes your book so awesome, too, because it did – your family was – in Hawaii, which, you know, so you do know stories, like mm-hmm. real stories, <laughs> you right. know, that it's based off of, and that it's not just research, you know, uh, going on the internet and researching it. You've heard stories your whole life. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I thought that was really cool. And especially because um, your grandfather was, a, you know, this, this story takes a place and there's a lot talked about with schools and the Japanese schools and Ella, one of the main characters who is also, um, right, you write it from her perspective. And, you know, the fact that your grandfather was a principal at a school. And I don't even want to try to say the name, so I'm going to let you say it. Uh, it it's called Hono, Honoka. Honoka, okay. Honoka, or you could say Honoka. Um, a lot of people will just say Honoka. And it is the small town. I know a lot of the words. Before that, he was at Laosahoi Hoi, and before that, he was at Kona Waina. <laughs> so you've got a lot of the long Hawaiian words, which can be very challenging to pronounce. And that's why the Marines called it honey cow. They called the town honey cow because they couldn't pronounce Kona Ka. Um, yeah, I mean, the just the fact, I never thought about that there were so many Japanese citizens on Hawaii, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't know. I mean, even when you watch the movie Pearl Harbor, I don't think you're really getting the picture of what it was like there, which is my right. only reference. And I think a lot yeah. of people, that's their only reference is that movie, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. because it, it, it did show what happened on the base, but right. I don't outside in the towns and where the, you know, citizens that were affected um, after, and this takes place after uh, Pearl mm-hmm. Harbor. So it's like, what happens? After, you know, right. and, and when you are among Japanese citizens, you know, citizens of the United States, but they're Japanese origin. And right. like, right. you know, I, and I had read a book, I don't know, about a year ago about what happened with the Japanese citizens that were in mainland, which I didn't even realize that they had sent them all to a camp. So I was mm-hmm. really shocked to hear that. And so um, is that is that what they did? Did they send them to a camp? So they were, yeah, they were in the internment center internment. near the camp. Right. Um, and it was, it, you know, because we had all the plantations here, they brought, um, you know, a lot of Japanese came over, a lot of Filipinos, we had Chinese, we had all different ethnicities here working. Um, a lot of them came for the plantations. And so, yeah, especially on the outer islands, like the big islands, that was a large that was a large part of the population. Mm. Well, I loved it. I mean, so the chapters are divided for everybody out there. Um, Violet is the main character, and then her daughter, Ella. And Violet's husband disappears after Pearl Harbor. And there's all kinds of suspicion around him. And I thought what you did really well at the end of every chapter, like you ended these chapters like – I don't know. I just wanted to keep reading another chapter. Like I was going to put it, you know, like I'd, I'd say, okay, I'm mm-hmm. give myself 15 minutes to sit down and read. And then you'd end a chapter and be like, okay, what does that mean? Now I got to keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I really loved how you did that. I was like, oh my gosh, she so had me hooked because I don't know that I, I don't know if Amazon puts this under like a suspense, but there is some no. sense in it, I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think all my books, I've, this was the fourth book that I've actually written, and it's the second, or my first book published, but I feel I, I like to have some kind of mystery or intrigue, because I, I do, I, I like books with that in them that I feel like helps carry the story along, and it makes you want to read more, and it just makes it more compelling um, to me to have elements of that as well. Right. And, right. And I don't necessarily plan. I, I tend to write more. Um, I don't sit down and plan the whole thing out. I, I have a rough idea, but it it unfolds as it does. And so oftentimes I don't even know what I don't know what's going to happen until I write it, which is also fun as a writer. <laughs> yes. You know, you sit down and, and it's it's just like you're sitting down to read a book almost when you're writing it and you don't know what's going to happen. 
Right. I, just to give a for instance for everybody, um, at the end of the prologue, you say, um, nowadays I keep, this is Ella talking, the daughter, um, nowadays I keep the knife close, but not for the coconuts. And right there I was like, ah, okay, so she knows, like, stuff. And, uh-huh. you know, right right away we know, you let us know that she knows things. Mm-hmm. And she's a yeah. little girl, you know. So, yeah. It, and I don't know, I I loved her chapter, just so you know. <laughs> I oh, really did. You. I she really was, enjoyed them. This was uh, the first time I had written uh, any book with a point of view from the first person. And, you know, Violet's her third person point of view, Ella's her first person point of view. And, and mm-hmm. I found it actually very surprisingly easy to write. Like her chapters just came out very easily. So that was nice. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I just thought the elements going back and forth between the mother and the daughter and then, you know, how each one sees what's happening, you know, and mm-hmm, getting their perspective mm-hmm. on what is going on there. And, yeah. You know, I, I thought yeah. that was brilliant. I, and, and, well, and it made for enjoyable reading, you know. Mm-hmm. My my mom was a little girl and during, you know, this whole war, and so I – her stories were very different than my grandmother's stories, what she remembered and how she remembered it. And so I knew that I wanted to have a, a, a young girl in it. And um, when she's older, my mom, I think, was five at the time. But, um, yeah, so I felt like this was a way to portray both both sides, I think. Yeah, okay. you know, right. And I love that the little girl was so interested in the Japanese culture and the language and everything like that. Because when I was, I'm a homeschooling mom and my last two sons, um, I asked them what language they wanted to take. And they were like, Japanese. I'm like, what? They're like, yeah, we want to do something different. Like they didn't want to learn Spanish. Spanish is big around here, you know, and they're like, Uh no, Uh we want to do Japanese. So I went on and bought a Japanese program and we did that for like three or four years. Oh, wow. But, you know, so I did I can't say I understood because it's been a while. You know, that was a couple of years mm-hmm. ago. But I have to say it was a lot of fun learning, you know, mm-hmm. and seeing mm-hmm. how close some of the words are to English that I don't think people realize. Like, there were a, there's a lot of similarities, but, you know, there's a lot of differences, too. But it was a lot of fun to learn. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's a cool language. It, it is. It's a beautiful language. And I don't actually speak Japanese. I speak Spanish as well, but... Um, I, my mom's brother was in the Japanese school. He was, I think, the only the only white kid in there, and he. So that was kind of what spurred that on. He had a few mm-hmm. stories about it. But yeah. Where yeah. where I went to school and grew up, it was it was we had uh, my school was at least half Japanese, and I was always <laughs> so I had I think I was how she admired their beautiful hair and how neat Mm -hmm. and everything. Um, That's that's how I kind of felt as as a little girl. That's so cool. There's so much about your family. Like, I can totally see why you had to write this book, though. I Mm -hmm. mean, because there's so many references to your family. And so I can see definitely why this book was calling for you to write it. Mm, Yeah, it was. And Hawaii, all my books are set in Hawaii. There's just... So much history here, so much beauty, so many interesting, you know, there's just so much to write about. I couldn't not write. Well, I, I really want to come to Hawaii. <laughs> I have not been to Hawaii, but especially after reading this book, I'm like, I really need to get to, it's far, okay? <laughs> it is far. It is far. My boyfriend's family is from Indiana, and so it, uh, it's a long way to get there. You can't just yeah. fly direct either, you know. No, nope. places. No, we it would have to be like a layover in California and then from California, there, you know. And plus, mm-hmm. you'd want to break it up anyway. But I, I think it would be worth the trip because I, I know people who've been there and they've never been disappointed. So you know, yeah. nobody comes back from Hawaii disappointed, you know. No. <laughs> So, okay, this is that's what I was so confused about because Amazon said this was a debut novel, but then I'd seen that you'd written other books. But this is well, the one with this publisher? No, it is a debut novel. Uh, my books that are in the works are books that I have yet to publish. They, they were books I wrote before and then just after this novel. And so um, we've kind of just been focusing on this in terms of 
I haven't, they haven't read my other books yet. And, you know, I'm hoping that, that the others will get published, or at least some of them will. And then I have another one that should come out in February of 2019 with the same publisher that's actually set on the, the Maxon Lurleen. And it, mm-hmm. it's coming over to Pearl Harbor just before the war, or to Honolulu just before the war, a few days before the war. And, oh, then, wow. and then during the war, it's about a nurse, and there's a mystery as well, and a love story. So that is what's in the works now. Yeah, and that's what makes a great historical fiction book, if you ask me. You get the history, which I love, because I love learning about the history. But then there's always this really cool romance somewhere mm-hmm. woven in there. And, mm-hmm. and and your book definitely hits all those points, and that's why I loved it so much. And I, I can't wait to read your next one. I mean, I loved – I read every word of this book. I loved it so much, and you know, oh, you're a great makes... writer. Thank you. That really – Yeah. I mean, that's – when an author hears that, it's just, it means everything, you know, because there's so much rejection that goes into getting an agent and getting published, and um, it's a long road. And so when to hear people love it or connect with it, it just it makes it all worth it. Yeah, I was talking to an author the other day, and I'm, I actually can't remember which one. <laughs> so it's good because then I don't have to say. But <laughs> I, but um, she was saying that her book got rejected like 18 times, like an enormous amount, you know, that she was just about ready to give up. And then, you know, yeah. somebody jumped on it, and now it's doing extremely well. And I was thinking to myself, gosh, that would be so difficult to get rejected that many times. And then, Mm -hmm. but then so amazing when somebody picks it, you know, a publisher loves it and then goes out there and promotes it and it does really well. Like it's so rewarding. And, you know, sometimes being a writer is also very lonely, you know, because it's you and the keyboard and the computer Mm -hmm. and, you know, but, um, but yeah, I mean, more often than not, you hear the rejection things way more than somebody saying, oh, I wrote this book and it got picked up and they loved it. And, you know, like that's not, that's not usually real life, you know? Right. It takes usually behind most debut novels. There's other novels that have been written, and right. there are huge amounts of rejection letters from agents and publishers, and that's just how it is. And and knowing that though makes it easier too because you know, okay, this is just how it is. It's part it's, of the deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's as plugging. everybody, yes. Yeah. And as they're listening to us, they are seeing the cover, and I love the cover of this book. Did you have any input into it? Um, I had, like, I gave them some pictures of things I liked, and I think they wanted to try to portray the cliff, you know, in Hawaii because of the connection to, I think, what, what happened there in the in the novel. I won't give anything away, but, um, right. the, yeah, and sort of a little bit of a vintage feel. We had a completely different cover, actually. It was a, 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 draw, a print, so it was an artistic rendering of um cliffs and a woman and a girl and then they ended up scrapping that completely and starting over and it seems to a lot of people seem to love the cover and think it's you know just that dramatic beauty of it yes oh well it's beautiful and um i am so happy that i got to read it and then i got to meet you because it was such a great book and I can't wait for your next one. So you know where to find oh. me <laughs> when your next one comes yes, out. I will definitely read it and we can talk again. And um, I just want to tell everybody that I will have the link to the book underneath this video along with all of Sarah's other links so you can find her. And thank you so much for waking up and talking with me today. Thank you for having me. And I'm really happy that you enjoyed the book. <laughs> I really did. Well, you have a great day, Sarah. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Everyone for listening to Sarah and I talk about her brand new book. She was so sweet. Oh, what a great conversation I had with her. Um, I am so happy that I was able to read this book and, um, I will have all of her links listed below. Um, also the link to the book. It came out in February. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you everyone.